Fran, go ahead and share your screen with us. Make sure to unmute yourself. Our next presenter will be Maria Francisca Zabalaga Haberman, and she will be presenting Twisted Development, Assessing the Educational Value of a 4D Interactive Embryonic Gut Tube Model. Thank you so much, Corey, for the um, introduction. Um, if anyone has any questions, my email address is also located on the um, first slide. Um, embryology is fundamental to anatomical understanding in medical education. However, it is often taught as a minimally integrated subject in other courses. And with changes in curricula, some of the major challenges in teaching and learning embryology are the reduced curricular hours, as well as the limited visual and physical aids to demonstrate complex changes that occur not only on three spatial dimensions, but also in the four dimension in time. Students mostly utilize 2D book images to learn and understand these difficult concepts. Studies have shown that 3D and interactive resources enhance learning outcomes and engagement. So knowing these, we developed a 4D embryonic gut tube model with arts and crafts material that can demonstrate gut tube development from week four to week 12. Here you can see the student going through the process of gut tube herniation, rotation, and retraction. The aim of our study was to assess the educational value of a 4D interactive embryonic gut tube model and the student perceptions on the educational value of the model. Our hypothesis was that the use of the 4D interactive embryonic gut tube model in an integrated gross anatomy course will enhance student learning over the 2D textbook images. In a COMIRB exam randomized single blind study, 184 first year medical students who had already completed their GI development content lecture were recruited, and our study was part of one of their active review sessions. All students took the same pre quiz before interacting with their assigned resource, and then were randomized into control and experimental groups, and then divided into teams to six to eight students. Students in the control group were provided with a series of 2D embryology textbook images depicting gut tube development from week 4 to 12 with specific number structures. Students in the experimental group were provided with the 4D interactive resource demonstrating the same process as the structures in the 2D images. An example of these would be numbers 7 and 8, which are the head and tail of the pancreas. Both groups completed an activity worksheet with identical learning objectives utilizing their assigned resource. After completing the activity, both groups took the same post quiz and survey. The post quiz contained different questions than the pre quiz to control for repeated quiz effect, but they were guided by the same learning objectives and level of difficulty. After completing the survey, students switched resources and interacted with the other resource. After interacting with both resources, students voted for their preferred resource on the way out of the room. Data analysis for the learning outcomes and survey were completed, including theme analysis on the student comments. As results, a total of 156 completed data sets were collected with consent, 76 for the control and 80 for the experimental group, as the students had the option to exclude their data from the study. Our learning outcomes showed that both control and experimental groups post-quiz performance was significantly improved after interacting with their assigned resource with an effect size of 0.27. The percent change in correct answers from pre-quiz to post-quiz between both groups was not significantly different, suggesting that learning occur regardless of the resource type. In terms of perceived engagement and educational value of the assigned resource, both groups rated their resource high with no significant difference between the groups. Additional analysis showed that students felt the resource was helpful for understanding three main concepts in adult anatomy, the development of digestive organs, the development of mesenteries, and the anatomic rotation of pancreas, bile duct, and duodenum. Even though we saw higher trends on the experimental group, there was no significant difference between the groups or items, suggesting that both resources were equally helpful for understanding these concepts. After exposure to both resources, exit poll revealed that both groups prefer the 4D interactive model over the 2D resource with an effect size of 0.74, suggesting that the 4D resource would be the resource of choice for students when learning gut to development. Student feedback had similar themes between both groups, as the students felt their assigned resource was helpful to understand gut to development and wanted more time for resource interaction and activity. 
A unique theme for the experimental group was that the students wanted a tutorial on how to use the 4D interactive model to demonstrate gap tooth development, even though the students had written instructions on how to use the model during the activity. In conclusion, we saw significant learning outcomes regardless the resource type which leads to rejecting our hypotheses, as there was no significant difference in learning outcomes between the control and the experimental groups. Despite of the similar learning outcomes, students from both groups prefer the 4D interactive embryonic model. And students using the 4D interactive model for the first time will like a tutorial demonstrating gaps of development in the 4D resource. Some of the limitations of our study were a group effect. The students worked in groups to complete the assigned activity, which may have influenced our results. There was also a time limit of only 50 minutes to complete the entire study. And there also, for the 4D interactive resource, it might have intimidated the students because they had to interact with the resource on their own without a tutorial, which may have increased their fear of getting the answers wrong or solidifying concepts wrong. In future directions, we would recommend repeating the, the same study, allowing more time, smaller groups, and potentially a short tutorial demonstrating gaps of development for the 4D interactive resource. Reduce the group and active learning effect on learning outcomes by repeating the study in an individualized and more passive learning setting. And then study the effect of using the same 4D interactive resource by the students before or while learning the material rather than. Um, after. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge my Capstone committee and everybody who has made my project possible. Thank you so much for listening and if you have any questions I'm happy to answer them now. Great work Fran, that was fantastic. Uh, so I'm going to check the stream here. We have a few questions popping up. Number one, could there have been a difference in the long-term retention? So we actually did a retention um, analysis and a retention quiz about 90, 90 days after um, the activity, and there was no significant difference between the control and the experimental group. So they both retained the same amount, and it wasn't statistically significant. Okay, great. The next question is, based on your study outcome, would you recommend others to develop physical embryo resources? I would. Um, I think that, you know, we had some of the limitations on the way in which the model was tested, but I feel like, I strongly feel that it would be, uh, it's a good resource as the students prefer it because it allows you to see the temporal dimension of these changes. So I think it's a great tool to learn the material and clearly, I mean, additional study needs to be done to, to prove if it's efficacy, but the fact that students prefer it, I think it's really good. Yeah. But Diane, uh, the dynamic nature of that, that interactive resource was impressive. Thanks.